Hello and welcome to the first video tutorial on Mathematica. So in this video, what I'm going to show you is uh, how to get started using uh, this software. Now, the goals for this video will be two things. First, the basic uses of Mathematica and a real overview of its many features. Mathematica has a lot of features and can be used for many different areas other than mathematics. But I'm going to just give you an overview of what those things are. So when you start Mathematica, the first thing you're going to see is this kind of window. Now for you, this might look a little bit different because in this area here that says, says the recent files, you might have this empty because you haven't worked on any files yet. But usually it's going to look something like this. So this is version 12.1. So if you are watching this in the future, your version of Mathematica might be a little bit different. Now, to start working on Mathematica, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna start a new document. Now, you can just go ahead and click right here and the new document is gonna start. Or you can click here in this arrow and start a new document. Now, let me click on the arrow to show you the different things that you can do. So when you click on the arrow here, there are different options that you can use for Mathematica, most of the time what you want to be using is called the notebook. So think about the notebook in the real sense that you have a notebook. So you're going to use the notebook to write things, to do computations, and you can save different notebooks depending on what you're trying to do. So that's what I'm going to do. That's so I'm going to open the notebook. And the notebook is going to be something like this. So here, this is going to be used to type your computations. And you can also do this for text editing as well. Now, one of the things that I want to do first before I start is uh, talk about a few settings and few things that you can uh, use here in this, uh, in this software. Now, if I start typing, you can use uh, Mathematica as a calculator. So I can say something like 2 plus plus three, and it will give me the answer. As you can see here, that font is actually really small. One of the first things I would like to do is I want to increase the font so I can see better. Now, if you leave it like this, that's fine. If you prefer this is small font, that's OK. You can change the font by going to the lower right corner right here when it's the percentage sign, and you can change it to your preference. I personally like to go to 200% but you can choose whatever you want. So this is going to be the window that you're going to see here. Now, a couple of things I'm going to point out is this. When you do a computation like the one we did here, to say to Mathematica that you want to compute it, you press Control or Shift Enter. So Shift Enter, it computes what you're trying to do. So let, let me give you another example. Let's say, for example, I want 8 plus say 14. If I press enter here, it's going to give me just a new line. To actually tell Mathematica that you want the computation, you want to press shift enter. Or you can also press en enter in your numeric path and it's going to have the same effect. So that's how you're going to uh, do the or tell Mathematica that you're going to do computations. Now, another thing that I want to mention here is this. As you can see here, Mathematica is labeling the inputs and the outputs. So here, the first one, this is input 1, output 1, input 2, output 2. You can refer to those inputs and outputs as well. So for example, if I want to know what was output number 1, I just type output number 1, and Mathematica will remember what that was. The output number 1 was 5. So Mathematica can be used as a simple calculator. So let's do, so for example, some, some computations. So let's say, for example, we can compute like some factorial. So for example, 500 uh, factorial. So how find the factorial will be something like this. And it will compute the factorial of the number. You can also, for example, have approximations of numbers. For that, we will use the uh, code n, so n will give you an approximation. So let's say, for example, we want to compute the first 300 digits of pi, and then we will type it like this, capital P, I, 
and then comma 300. Now, one thing I want to explain here is you saw here that when I typed the lowercase, it became blue. In this case, when it's version 12 and other versions of Mathematica, when it turns blue, it means that Mathematica is actually understanding this as a variable, not as an actual constant or function that is already in the system. So when it's blue, you probably need to uh, change some capitalization of some of the letters. So here you can find the first 300 digits of pi. Now, one of the things I'm going to suggest to you that you do is when you started to work in Mathematica, organize your computations by topics. So here in this uh, software here, this is untitled. I'm actually going to save it, save it as, and I'm going to give it some name here. So I'm going to say, let's for, for example, let's call it uh, test. And I'm going to save that. Now, one thing that I also want to uh, suggest to you is you use uh, dates. So you remember when you did all these computations. This is going to be helpful later when you have tons of notebooks and computations. So you refer to which one it is. So I'm going to say this is on uh, April 7, 2020, which is today's date. Now, you can use any label in the system as you want, but keep these things organized. And also, another suggestion is keep a folder exclusively for the Mathematica notebooks. So it's easy for you to find it. Now, what other things can you do in Mathematica? So let's do some numerics. Numerics like some, actually some um, number theory, for example. Now, you can treat notebooks as you would treat, for example, your notebooks. So you can write things, not only computation, you can make things for example, let's say titles. Now, if you look at the notebook here, there is an, a plus symbol here. If you click on it, you can create plain text. So let's say we want to organize this notebook by sections. So go all the, scroll all the way down and click here. It says other style of text. And it will bring up the type of style that you can uh, type here. So we have chapter and several other things. So let's organize things here. Let's say by by chapters. You can actually play with this and see how it looks depending on how you like the organization of your notebook to be. So I'm going to organize mine by chapter, but you can use whatever you want, whatever you prefer. So I'm going to click OK here and I can just type here just uh, text. So I'm going to call this numerics. Now, another important feature of Mathematica is you see on the right hand side that is this little uh, lines that you see here that are called the cells. Every cell is going to be something that is going to contain either a computation or text or graphics or something else. Now, in the ones that you see right here, the ones above, they contain, contain the input and the output. And every input and output are all containing one single cell divided into subcells here. Now, the advantage of having something like this is if you have like an output that is really long like this one and you don't want to see this anymore, you can double click on this cell here and it's going to collapse that part of the computation. So you already know what the output was. So you don't, if you don't want to see it anymore or just double click again so you can see it. So it's just a neat trick you can, you can do. Now for this here, this is a cell that contains the text. Now to start doing some computations, I know to create a new cell. The only thing you can do here, you can do here is go a little bit lower than this one because you start typing here. Mathematica is going to understand this as a text. So lower here, your cursor is going to become horizontal. When it becomes horizontal here, it means that you are back into computation, not text. So let's say, for example, we want something like, uh, let's say, let's compute a prime number. Now, when I start typing, you can see here, I have different types of suggestions here. This is very helpful because if you don't remember what is the name of your function, Mathematica suggests to you what things that are available that start with that thing. So I'm, let's say I'm looking for primes. 
and using your key, uh, your arrow keys here, you can scroll up and down to see what it is. Now, if you don't know what each of these things are, one of the great features of Mathematica is you can actually get to help right from here. Now, let's say I don't know what prime does. There is an I symbol here for information. If I just click on it, it's going to bring the help for that particular function. So it's going to explain what the function does. Prime of n gives the nth prime number n. I'm going to increase the font again so you can see it better. And it gives examples, basic information on how to use it and other things here that you can look at. So this is a very helpful thing for in Mathematica that you can just look at uh, functions directly from where you are typing. So prime n here is going to compute the nth prime number. So I'm going to close this here. So prime. And if you want to auto-complete, auto just scroll with the arrow keys and just press enter and it will auto-complete for you. So let's say we want the 200th prime number and that will give us uh, 1223. So that's output 6. Mathematica also can do things, for example, like check if something is a prime number. So prime Q. And then notice here, every time I write a function, I write the name of the function, which usually starts with the uppercase and open and close the square brackets. So in here, I'm going to put right in the middle the number that I want to test for primarity. Now, let's say we're going to test a number like 2 to the 11 minus 1. So 2. To type uh, an exponent, as usual, you use the caret symbol and type the exponent. So 2 to the 11, let's say minus 1. And it will check for primality. So it says it's not a prime number. Now, let's say that you don't want to write it down like this. You want to write it down in the way that you used to write it when you type math. So instead of typing all of this, so I'm going to erase it. Now, if you press control and the caret symbol, it's going to bring up this way of writing uh, as you usually do it with your pen, for example. So 2 to the 11, and you see the cursor is right there in the exponent. Just press the forward key, the arrow key, and it will bring it down to the bottom. So now you can write down minus 1. So it's control caret symbol, and the cursor goes to the exponent. So make sure you write it. You put it uh, in the usual display, so with the forward arrow key, so you can actually complete the statement. So in this case, of course, it's going to be false again. Now, it can also factor integers. So for example, factor integers. So I'm going to press enter here. And let's say, for example, we want to factor 10 factorial, let's say, minus 1. Close the bracket. And I will try to factor that as an integer. So this is will do factorizations. And so that's 29 to the first. This the output means 29 to the first. That 29 is the prime number, and this is a prime number to the first power. So the answer of this is in the form of a list. A list in Mathematica is determined by this curly braces that is here. Now let's try to do something a little bit similar to what we did here. So let's say we wanna factor, let's say, 100 factorial or 1,000 factorial minus 1. So let me uh, remember to always press shift enter or enter in your nomadic keypad. Now, as you can see here, the math Mathematica is actually trying to evaluate this. And this particular factorization is actually going to take a very long time. The cell here, you see, that's kind of illuminated like this. It means that it's trying to compute that, and it's going to take a long time. Now, one thing I want to mention here is this. When a computation is taking a long time, you do not have to close the application here to tell Mathematica to stop. One thing you want to do is you go here to Evaluation, click on it, and check for something that says Quit Kernel all the way scroll down. So what quick kernel is going to do is going to stop all the computations. You say quit. 
so that all the computations are being stopped. What this does is just tells Mathematica, don't stop computing, but don't, don't close my applications. All the information you already type is already there, so you're, gonna, you're not going to lose it, and you can save it. That's a big advantage of having Mathematica. You can work in this notebook, and if you want to stop the computation, you can stop it by going here, evaluation, quit kernel, without having, without having to close the whole application. Now, that's especially useful when Mathematica gets stuck in some computation, in that it will eventually happen. So make sure you use that instead of closing the application completely, because you might lose some unsafe uh, work. Now, let's continue with this. Remember, this is just an overview of what the ma Mathematica can do. So let's see what else can we do. Let's do some algebra. So I'm going to start a new chapter here. So go here to the uh, plus symbol sign here. Click on it, or style text. And let's see. So let's just or organize this by chapter. So I'm going to say algebra. All right. Now, remember to get out of here of this cell. So just put your cursor all the way down, and when it becomes horizontal, that is the clue for you to now put things in math. Now, so let's do some algebra. So, for example, expand. So expand. Expand is going to do what you think it's supposed to do. It's going to take an algebraic expression, and it's going to expand it. So let's say we want to expand something like this, x plus 3. For example, I made a mistake there. Let me get rid of that. So x plus uh, 3. And let's say I want this to the 10th power. Remember to use the control carrot symbol here to the 10th power. So that's going to expand that algebraic expression. So Mathematica is a computer algebra system, and it understands, of course, variables. So in this case, it's going to give you the answer for that. You can also do factorization of polynomials. Let's say, for example, factor. Now, we really use factor integer. That is only for integers. Factor is for algebraic expressions. So if you use factor here, let's say x to the fifth power. Uh, and then remember to use the forward arrow to go back down, minus 1. Close it. And that's going to give me the factorization of that uh, polynomial. Now, one thing I didn't mention before, and you probably saw here, is after a computation, Mathematica is going to give you some suggestions on what you can do with the output. So you can plot it, you can simplify more, uh, expand. In this case, it will not expand anymore. Or take the derivative, or you can click here on more. So you can see more options that you can use here for, for this type of uh, output. So it will be smart enough to suggest things that are appropriate for the output that you are getting here. So let's say, for example, um, I don't know, let's say let's compute the derivative. So that will compute the derivative of that expression. Now, so let's go now that we already talked about the derivative and you saw this symbol here. Let's say you, let's look at some calculus, for example. So let me start another another chapter. Now, by the way, you don't have to do this. Uh, divide things by chapters. Uh, this is just a way to organize your computation. If you just want to put all there together, that's fine too. So it depends on what you want to do. So let me click here when the cursor becomes horizontal. And let's do some calculus. So let's look at, for example, limit, one of the things that you do in calculus classes. So Mathematica, of course, has a way of computing limits. So you just type limit, start typing, and you can see there there is an option for limit. Just press enter, and then let's start typing something for limit. So whenever you're using functions, remember it's going to be always in Mathematica. All the functions are going to start with a, a square bracket and end with a square bracket as well. So let's type something. So a trigonometric function, for example, sine, always start with a capital uh, letter, all the most of the functions in mathematics will start like that sign. So let's press enter here. Let's say sine of x. And let me write down over x. Now, if you want to write down sine of x over x, you're also going to use control 
but in this case control slash so control slash here will allow you to write a fraction control slash so that's going to give me over x so i'm going to take the limit of that expression and then comma when x approaches and that's going to be written as the hyphen and then greater or equal sign and let's say we are going to do that approaching zero you notice here that that became an arrow so mathematica will format that for you now if i just press shift enter or enter in your numeric keypad it's going to give me the limit of that of that expression when x approaches zero now another way that you can uh, find type limits here is you can go to the palette or palettes that is here click on there and press here on basic math assistant so that's going to bring out an assistant and it's going to tell you how to type several types of things here so you can go ahead and play with this there's a lot of functionality here for for mathematica now I'm going to go here to this, this is divided by tabs, I'm going to go here to this tab and I'm going to click on limit again. So just to show you how, how else you can write down limit. So I'm going to click on limit and it's going to bring this, uh, this up. So here I just have to click on every specific highlighted uh, place and it's going to say for example click here on variable. So my variable is x here here on value so limit when x approaches zero and then here i'm going to put the expression i'm just going to take this Control c and copy this here and it's going to give me exactly the same answer as before now this is just to show you how you can use the basic math assistant to type things so you can see here on the right hand side you have different types of things so for example derivatives and some uh, other templates to use for integration and summations and multiplication now I'm going to leave it up there for you to see. So I'm going to press uh, shift enter to get the answer. And of course I get one because that's exactly what it is supposed to be. Now derivatives, as you can see here on the right hand side, you can use this symbol of this one, or you can just type it like this D. So capital D will mean derivative. It's either regular derivative or partial derivatives. Both of them will work exactly with the same thing. So if it is d, let's say for example x, uh, let's say times e to the x, let's actually look for e here in the basic math assistant. And now it's right here. So I'm going to click on it and it's going to bring the template. So just click there on expression to put, let's say for example, 5x. And then go out of the exponent by pressing the forward arrow key put it down in the regular thing and you're going to say comma here because you're going to have to specify what kind of what is the variable of this derivative now there is only one variable here x so this would be the regular variable with respect to x so that will give us the derivative of that with respect to x and that's going to be the answer now you can plot it you can simplify it, you can take the derivative again or integrate now let me do one more thing here now let's say I copy and paste this one because I want to do just a, a small change here. Let's say this is not a function of, of one variable but a function of two variables. So I'm going to change here the exponent, click on there, and I'm going to say times y. So now that this is a function of two variables and if I take the derivative with respect to x it's going to be just a partial derivative. So let's press just enter here and it will give me the partial derivative with respect to x. So this symbol d works both as a just the regular derivative and the partial derivative. And you can have as many uh, variables here as you want. Now, let's say, for example, you want to take, let's say, the fifth derivative of the expression x times e to the 5x. That can be done very easily. I'm so going to uh, copy and paste it here. And so if we want to as for the fifth derivative, you don't have to do this computation five times. You can tell Mathematica directly here. What you're going to do is you're going to change here, here the second uh, argument here. You're going to still leave the x here, but you're going to surround that by a curly braces here. This is com x, and if you say comma five, 
is going to take five derivatives of that specific function. So here, in this place, you will type a whole number. So five, the number of derivatives that you want for the expression that is here. So in this case, it's the five derivatives of that, and that's going to give me the answer. That's the fifth derivative of this expression here. So this can be anything you want. And this also can be two variables as well. So that's how you take derivatives. So what else can you do? Like we're talking about mathematics, then calculus in particular. So we can also do integrals. Uh, for integrals, I'm going to use the basic math assistant. You can also do it by typing. So if you just type integral, 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 or integrate, and you go to the here to the information menu, and it gives you an idea when the how you type the integrals here. But I'm going to use the template for this. So I'm going to erase that and I'm going to use a template. So here on the basic commands. Now, by the way, if you didn't see this, it might mean that this is all collapsed for you. So just click on the arrow to bring up the different options. So you, once you start, you might have something like this. I forgot to say to say that at the beginning. Just, uh, just click on the arrow to reveal all the commands here. So I'm going to do an integral. Let's say I'm going to do a define integral. So for define integral, I will have to use this template because I have a lower and upper limit. So I'm going to use that. So it's going to bring it up here. Now the lower limit, let's say, is 0. This is just for an example. The upper limit, let's say, is 2. The expression here, let's just put a simple polynomial there. So let's say I have x squared, or x squared here, plus 2x uh, plus 1. And make sure that you put the variable. So d, dx here, that would be the variable for the function. So it's going to give you the answer for that. So that would be uh, so, sort of like a really, really quick overview of what Mathematica have do for calculus. Mathematica can do a lot more, a lot more than this. So let's, let's go into another topic. Remember, this is just an overview. Now let's look at, for example, Let's say plotting. So how do you plot things? So plot. So Mathematica is also a very powerful tool for plotting. So let's start with a simple, let's say a simple uh, plot. So let's say you start just by writing plot. Open and close uh, the square bracket. And let's say you want to uh, say 20 times sine of x. Now, when you plot in Mathematica, you have to put the function that you want to plot first and also the range on where you want to plot the function, so the values of x. You're going to indicate that by opening and closing a curly braces, the variable x is going to range in some interval. Let's say, for example, we want the x to be between 0 and 10. Now you can put any number that you want here, but make sure that you put the variable, the variable that is here from this function. So in this case, it's going to give me the, the plot of the function 20 times sine of x between 0 and 10. So that would be the graph of, of that function there. Now you see here, this became again another cell. You can also edit this kind of uh, picture and you can save it, you can do many things with it, which I'm not going to go into the details in this video because this, remember, is just a really uh, overview of what Mathematica can do. You can also do things in 3D, so for example, plot uh, 3D, you're just going to type it like that. Now, if you don't know how to type things in plot 3D, again, just click on the information symbol here and then is going to bring up the help options for Mathematic here. Let me close that here. So plot 3D. So how do you use the plot 3D? The first thing you're going to do is you're going to type your function. In this case, it will be of two variables. So it can be plot in three variables. So I'm going to start with an easy function. Let's say x squared minus y squared. Now, in this case, because we have two variables, we will have to give the range for both x and y. So to do that, so let's say x goes from, let's say, minus 10 to 10. That would be the first range. And then put a comma 
the other range for the variable y. So let's say y is now between negative 10 and 10. So shift enter, and it's going to bring up the graph for x squared minus y squared. So this is the function z equals to x squared minus 1 squared in this range. And you can manipulate this function right here in the window of Mathematica. And you can save it, you can do a lot of edits as well. But remember, this is not uh, what the goal for this lecture is. It's just an overview. All right, so that's plotting. So what else can we do? That is, you see here, there's a little bit of an interactivity with the outputs of what Mathematica gives you. You can also do another kind of interactivity. And let's start one new, uh, let's say one new chapter here, interactivity. So what is interactivity in mathematics? It basically means that you can manipulate certain outputs depending on a variable. Now, one of the things that is very powerful here in Mathematica is the function manipulate, which is right there. You can go here and then click on this information uh, icon here to give you more, more of information about what the function does. So what manipulate is gonna do is it's gonna give you some interactivity depending on some parameter. For example, you can do something like this. I'm gonna factor, let's say this polynomial, x to the n minus one. Now, n here is not determined, x is the variable, uh, n is, x is the variable and n is a parameter. So I can say that I'm gonna factor x to the n minus one for several parameters of n. So for manipulate in here in the first um, part, you're gonna put any computation that can have a parameter. In this case, the parameter will be n. You can even put plots here, as we can see in a moment. And then I have to indicate what is the range of that parameter. So the parameter here is n. I have to say when do I start my parameter. So I'm going to factor, for example, a starting x squared minus 1, x cubed minus 1, and so on. So I'm going to start at 2. I'm going to go as far, let's say, as 10. So the n will go from 2 to 10. And I'm going to indicate the step. The step is how much I'm going to increase. I'm going to start at 2, and then I'm going to increase by 1, and then get 3, increase by 1 and then get four like that. So I'm gonna increase by one. So let's press enter here now. As you can see here, what kind of output is this? The output that you get here is when n is equal to one, this is the factorization. If you click in this symbol that is here, the plus symbol, this is smaller one, it's gonna give you the values of n here that are in this range and you can increase it. So let's say, let's move forward to three here. So you can see it plays all the values and you can manipulate this. Let's close it here. And you can manipulate this yourself. The factorization of all those things uh, for the range from 2 to 10. So this is what interactivity means. So this is an output you can also manipulate. Now this manipulate is very powerful because it allows you also to manipulate plots. So let, let me give you this example. So let's say let's manipulate a plot, manipulate here. And let's say let's manipulate a, a wave function. So a wave function, we have an amplitude times the wave function is always a sine. And this sine will have another parameter, let's say b times the variable x. So in this case, I'm using three parameters and c. So we have here, this is the the function. What I'm going to do this is plot. So I'm going to plot that. Make sure that you, when you open a close bracket, you close it. So I'm going to close it here. And then inside this plot, I'm going to use plot this function and I'm going to indicate what is the variable x here. How is it going to range? So let's say the variable x is going to range from 0 to, let's say, 2 to pi. Now, 
this is ignore the manipulate here for a second and let's look at this at this plot so this is going to be a plot of this wave function the sine the sine wave function between 0 and 2 pi but as you can see here there are three parameters there is a parameter a b and i should probably change this because this is let's say d uh, d parameter and let's put it back as, as c for example let's see if we have a problem we can change it later and now manipulate understand will understand that a b and c will be parameters of of this function so let's look at that so now we're going to say comma and we're going to indicate what is the range of that parameter so i'm going to indicate that parameter to be a that is going to range let's say from one to four just for an example i'm going to indicate also the parameter for b so b is going to be another parameter which is going to range let's say from one to ten and we have a final parameter c that is going to range let's say from 0 to 10. so this is going to give me a manipulate similar to what i have here but using the parameters a b and c so let me press enter there and it's going to bring this thing here so these are this is the graph of the function that we have here when a is equal to 1 b is equal to 1 and c equal to 0 and i can manipulate these parameters by just uh, moving here the different parameters a b and c to see how how that works so manipulate is a very powerful tool and we will go into the details maybe later remember this is just an overview now what i have shown you so far is just in math but Mathematica is much more than that. Mathematica, this software can do more than Mathematica. So let, let me show you a couple more things. So first, uh, let's put here a dictionary. You can use Mathematica as a dictionary as well. You can search and manipulate words in several languages with this software. Now we can search for words. We can do something that I think is actually very cool for me and it is you can especially or ask Mathematica how many the list of words that start with certain characters or has certain certain characters in them for that we're gonna use this function that's called the dictionary lookup that's the second one that you see right there the dictionary lookup and let's say we want to find all words in English that is start with C A N. So we're gonna indicate that with quotes C A N and we're gonna put the tilde and these three symbols. Those are gonna be all on your keyboard. I'm gonna show you where they are exactly. Now if you just type that what that means is for Mathematica is in the English dictionary, look for all the words that start with can. So if you press Shift Enter here, it's gonna give you the list of all the words that start with can in English. Now this is not only for English, you can also do this for other languages. Now I'm gonna collapse the here the the output just by double clicking there, and I'm gonna just copy and paste here because the next one is going to be very similar now let's say i want to look for that in spanish so to do that i'm gonna open and close the curly braces here and at the very beginning here because i want another language other than english i have to specify what language i want so to do that what you're going to do is you put the double quotes here and say spanish so if i say spanish here it's going to do exactly the same thing but it's going to give me the words that start with C-A-N in Spanish. So let's see that. And these are all the words that start with C-A-N in Spanish. And you can do this with like several other languages, French, German, and so on. So that's, that's actually a ton of them. So I'm going to collapse this as well. I don't want to see all of that. Last thing I want to do. 
for this is uh, Mathematica can also do geography and I can also do physics and chemistry and all of that. Another thing that you can ask Mathematica here is also ask for things in geography. The code for that is country data. So country data is going to give you information or computable things for, for geography. So let's say for the USA, uh, we use quotes, the USA. For the USA, let's say we're going to get the map. So to do that, we can say here, uh, cheap. So if we do that, country data, cheap. It's going to take a little bit of a while. Oh, I made a mistake here. Now, this is an imp actually that I'm glad this happened because one of the things here that's going to happen, usually is going to happen, is you will get an error. So when Mathematica has something like this, it has some red part here, it's going to give you an error. So shape here is a non-property for country data, and it's telling me how to how to um, fix it. So b my error was basically just because I probably just put the S in lowercase. So let's correct that with an S, capital S. Oops. And and that will give us the the um, map for the US. Now you can also use the country data to do some other things. So let me copy and paste again this. Copy and paste. And let's say we don't want, for the USA, we don't want the shape. Let's say we want the languages. Yeah, so that's right there. Languages. So with the languages that are spoken in the US, and so we'll bring up the list of all the languages that are spoken in the United States. So that's a lot of them. Let's collapse this. I don't want to see that. And you can do this for several other countries. So you can replace, for example, a USA here for France or or Germany or New Zealand or whatever, whatever country you want. Now, I know this uh, uh, video was kind of long, but I just want to give you an overview. This was touching several things, several topics in Mathematica, but I'm just going to show you how powerful this software is and how it can be used in several uh, uh topics other than mathematics all right so that's all i have to say for today thank you for watching take care and good luck